Hey everyone, today I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on how to teach you to do a basic buffalo check um, in Silhouette Studio and utilizing Photopea to make a 12 by 12 inch seamless pattern for use in your projects. I was having a little bit of a brain fart there. Sorry, it's been a long day, but I wanted to get this video out here because um, I learned how to do this quickly on my own in Silhouette Studio, and I think it's a really simple thing to do. And with this buffalo plaid craze going on, I figured I would give you all a video. So if you like stuff like this, go ahead and click subscribe below and give me some love, and I will be more than happy to make more of these videos. So to get started, you're going to want to open up a canvas in Silhouette Studio and you can make it a 12 inch by 12 inch. I just find this to be easier. Um, you can play around with it. It does not have to be 12 by 12, but you'll see why that's the way I do it later. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a square. Just make it a uniform one. It doesn't matter how big. We're gonna utilize the transform panel, which is right over here, and just make that a two by two inch square. You're going to go back to your transform panel and align that square horizontally and vertically. And then you're going to use your handy dandy replicate panel. And I am using business edition, so I'm going to use the simple tools. I'm not going to use any of the other tools. And you can duplicate it right five times. Or you can do a row of four and add two, and then um, add two more. Okay. <clears throat> so there's our first row. Whoops. And then you're going to want to select all of those and duplicate it down. Now we're going to start building our pattern. Okay. So you're going to want to select starting with the first square and going every other. So you select the first one with your mouse. You're going to hold the shift key down and you're going to click on the next square and then you're going to skip a square and you're going to click on the next square. And we're going to color these in black. I already have my fill in my line open so that way I can keep everything uniform. I'm just going to click on the black fill and the black line. Now, to build your buffalo check pattern, or just plaid pattern, however you want to call it, you want to use a brighter shade and then like a darker shade of that color. So we're going to go ahead and use blue for this example. So the color next to your black is actually going to be that darker shade. So the way that I accomplish this is I choose the color that I would like to fill, and in this case we're using blue. Okay, and you can actually go to the advanced options, and when you click on that color, it's going to bring your cursor over, and usually what I do is I'll just take that cursor and I drag it up until I find something that's like the color I kind of desire. Now, I had already chosen the color that I wanted for this, and actually that's pretty darn close. So I'm just showing you how I chose the colors. I'm just going to back out of that so it's back to what I want it to look like. And you're going to choose the color, the squares that are not colored in next to the black ones. And you're going to choose your darker color, okay, for the lines and for the fill. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your darker fill is diagonal to the other darker fills. So you select those three squares. Here's a quick trick for you. You can either click on them or you can hold the control button down and you can click on the already filled in squares and it will get both of your lines in your fill. It's much faster. Then you're going to select your other three squares that have not been colored in yet and you're going to click on your lighter color. Okay, you're going to do that for the lines and for the fill. And then you're going to select all 12 squares and you're going to replicate this 
two times. Go once, twice. Okay? You're done. You filled your entire 12 by 12. Now, it's important to note this right here is not the same as right here. And that is because we want to create a seamless pattern. So we're going to go ahead and save this as blue plaid test. And we're going to save it as a JPEG. All right. And then we're going to go to our web browser. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out and go to photop.com. Right. You click on new project. We're going to create a plaid paper. You want 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels at 300 dpi. Click create. Next step is to open up the pattern that we had just created. And we're going to go to image, image size, and we're just going to drop that down to 1200. What that's going to do is it's going to make the square smaller when we drop them into the paper instead of those big honking squares on a 12 by 12. And then we're going to go to edit, define new pattern, and it's going to add the pattern into the background. The next thing you're going to want to do is double click on your background layer and click on pattern overlay. You go to the drop down and click on your pattern. Okay. Click OK. Using the paint bucket, go ahead and fill. And there's your pattern. So you can see that the squares here are much smaller. I just wanted to resize that to the 12 by 12 than this here. If you desire a smaller square, you can change the scale in your pattern overlay before you save it. And that's going to make the square smaller. I do not recommend this because Silhouette Studio does have the ability to scale your patterns. So we're going to go ahead and save this as blue plaid pattern. And to achieve that, you just double click and put the name in. Go to File, Export as, JPEG. This is going to save as a 300 dpi JPEG. 3600 by 3600. Make sure your quality is set to 100% and click on Save. This is going to drop, drop this blue plaid pattern into your Downloads folder. Now, we want to insert this into Silhouette Studio so that we can use it to fill a shape. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a heart very quickly, preferably facing the right direction, and place it on my workspace. To upload your pattern, you're going to want to click on this folder down here. You're going to want to go to your downloads folder, find your new pattern, and drag it in. This is going to upload your blue plaid pattern, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> into your Silhouette Studio software. You can then click on your shape and go to fill pattern. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the line style pan because we do not need that anymore. When you scroll down, you can actually see your blue plaid pattern available. Because we made this a seamless pattern, you have the ability to pan it however you so desire, and it will never change. It will change the um, location of some of the pattern, but you're not going to see any breaks, and everything is going to be even. If you'd like smaller squares, you can change the scale to whatever you think looks good. And that's why I said earlier, you don't need to change the scale. In photo P, because you'll get the same, you'll achieve the same thing here. Okay. 
You can do this with virtually any colors. Um, I've done a couple of different ones that look pretty good. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you what an orange fill will look like. I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. And instead of going through the entire process, I'm just going to select all of the squares that I desire to check. And then I'm going to color them appropriately. That's what an orange one would look like. I'll go ahead and show you what the red looks like. And um, I actually was messing around with a few different ones earlier and still make, trying to find ones that look um, pretty decent. But I was messing around with different line styles actually and I created just like this really cool purple plaid with stripes that I, I really liked um, and this looks cool so you can add different lines and line weights and thicknesses to create different types of um, patterns and designs you can see that on the red it looks really neat um, and really the options are endless you can turn these into papers and sell them digitally or you can use them to fill in some of your works for sublimation or print and cut or whatever it might be. So if I helped you out today, feel free to subscribe down below. You can always join my Facebook group, um, Shooting Star SVG on Facebook, where I post a lot of free designs. I post most of my tutorials and things of that nature. And I'm always looking for feedback. If there's something you guys would like to learn, um, I just try to post things as I, I learn them. So hopefully you got something out of this and I hope you all have a great night.